I was having trouble connecting via uh, JTAG in debug mode to my STM32 based development board that I got off Banggood for about five dollars and uh, I could get the um, flash process to work via JTAG but I could only get that to work when I connected in uh, bootloader mode and it turns out that uh, I had something misconfigured. I, I don't want to give away the ending, so I, I won't go into more, any more detail, but uh, we'll go ahead and join past Greg as he tries to figure this all out. Hi, past Greg. So that's, that's what I'm trying to, to troubleshoot. And I, I'm probably doing so in, you know, the silliest possible way. Uh, or, or maybe not. I don't know. I mean, I don't know what I'm doing well enough to know whether this is an intelligent debugging process. I mean, I, I've, of course, poured all over Google trying to figure out if anyone else has had this problem. And information about this particular board is scarce. Um, so, yeah, I don't really know. <laughs> and so what I decided to do is to see if any, anything is happening on the JTAG bus at all when it's in run mode. So uh, I can get it to run uh, my Blinky, my Blinky um, code when it's in flash mode. So when it's executing flash, from flash rather. And like I said, you do that by bringing both of these low. And I'll, I'll set up and improve that in the next clip. So one moment. My all right, so this is about as simple as it gets. You can see here I've got blinky blinking. Yay, blinky. And you'll note that I changed this jumper to flash mode. And uh, then I power cycled, and there it goes. And if I attempt to connect via JTAG, I will get an error, which I will, I will show you here. Being, being a professional, I'm just going to point my camera at the computer screen and bring up, which I'm sure you can definitely read at this wonderful angle that I've I set up here. And I'll just uh, run open OCD and I get this error. I think the interesting part is right here where it says saw OXOF, not OX01. Don't know what that means. And so if I disconnect the JTAG completely, which you're just going to have to trust me, I've done uh, right now. I run it again, and I get the exact same error. So it leads me to believe that whatever I've done, and I don't know what that is, but whatever I've done in my code has completely broken JTAG while my code is running. And you're supposed to be able to debug. Um, you're supposed to bring up be able to bring the, 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 the chip up in halt. I've yet to figure out how to do it. I don't know if it's you know a typical PEBCAP kind of problem or if there's something wrong with the hardware or something wrong with the software. Um, anyways, so I'm gonna reconnect this and shift it out of flash mode, restart, and you'll see that the LED is no longer blinking because it's in bootloader mode now and I'll go back up to my terminal window once again helpfully captured and uh, you can see that I'm getting much more useful information and, and don't worry if you can't read that there's really nothing there right now so here's how I'm going to troubleshoot this I'm gonna leave that running and I'm going to connect my oscilloscope, which you may have seen my oscilloscope probe partially connected here. I'm going to connect my oscilloscope to the clock pin on the JTAG header in the hopes that I can see a clock, a constant clock, which I should be able to see, and then I can see if that clock exists when it's in flash mode, and I suspect that that will not be there which will be a result. So I will set up and we'll try that. So I very sloppily hooked one of, um, one of my oscilloscope probes to this crazy little mini 
probe thingy that I think I got on SparkFun. And I will now show you the, the clock signal on the oscilloscope. So you're definitely getting a clock. It's not a constant clock. I'm not entirely sure how JTAG works and whether that's normal, but it does appear to be consistently spaced, I believe. Um, and look at that happy clock. So we go way out. We can probably see the little bursts. Let me do another single shot. Yeah, there's little bursts of data there. I connected my oscilloscope to the test data out and test data clock pins and got this somewhat more interesting snapshot of the data that's going back and forth. All right, so I, I sorted it out. I figured it out. Um, it was definitely problem exists between keyboard and chair. Like I, you know, it, it, I spent a long time trying to figure this out and it turns out that uh, it was a very simple problem and it was, uh, you know, me doing it wrong. So I'm gonna show you the change that I made real quick and then I'll demonstrate debugging working and hopefully this will, uh, this will help you out if you run into this problem. So this is uh, the cube, cube MX, and this is responsible for generating configuration files. Um, it, they're, they're source files. It's, 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 it's building, it's building um, uh, the, the uh, configuration blocks within main.c. You can see them right here. This is the system clock. And this is where it sets up all the pins. And I, I think it's changing other files as well. Um, I haven't. I haven't spent the time to uh, to you know confirm all the things that it it changes when it generates um, when it generates code for you. There's probably, like I said, there's probably a lot. But anyways, um, as long as you keep your code within these user code begin user code end blocks, and you can make more, um, all as well. Or if you create a separate file to keep your code all as well and you can regenerate as many times as you like and it won't overwrite anything so here's here's the change that I made so previously I had this set to no debug which is obviously not gonna work now in my defense this is how the, the user interface normally looks so these things that are you know expandable they uh, they aren't expanded by default, like, you, you know, so that, that debug wasn't there. But, you know, still, I, I probably should have figured it out. And the way I ended up figuring it out is I went to this configuration page, and these are expanded by default, and I noticed, sis, no debug. Huh, I thought. And that's when I figured it out. So it, it just didn't have the pins um, wired up to the JTAG. Uh, headers so of course it wasn't gonna work and you know it, it makes perfect sense once you um, once you realize what's going on anyways uh, all you have to do is set that little you know make it work and I left all of these other things at the defaults uh, doesn't seem to be a problem and then you just click this generate code and then the the, uh, the code has been regenerated if you can't, um, if you have trouble building, it, it, the um, the way CMake works, it it's um, it tries to be helpful and it tries to keep like a cache of your previously built files. So if you run a build and you, you have a problem, um, you can do a, a clean a clean first, of course, or you can uh, dump the cache, which you you do that through um, C line like like this. And I, I actually don't know how to do it from the command line, but I'm sure it's not hard. Uh, I, I'm, yeah, I'm sure it's not hard. You probably just delete it like a folder or something. Anyway, um, you can see we have a successful build. And 
I'm gonna um, power cycle. You can see. Oh, let me let me ring this window up so you can see. Um, I'm gonna power cycle the device, and you can see we have Blinky, which is step one. Now step two is can we connect? So if I um, if I come over here, um, oh, <laughs> I gave it away. It was running behind the scenes. Um, start up Open OCD, and yep, we have we have liftoff. We have success. Now, in order to be able to debug, you do have to put it in halt mode, and the easiest way to do that is via the um, the Telnet uh, server that it you know that it creates. So all you have to do is reset halt, and once you've done that. You can see it stopped blinking, so it, it basically resets and then waits for a debugger to attach. And so I'll show you how to set that up. So um, the latest version of Sea Lion supports, um, by the way, I know it's kind of noisy in here, so I'm sorry about that in advance. This is down in my basement. So yeah, things are making noise and, and there's very little I can do about it. So anyways, um, Sea Lion supports remote GDB. You can use anything that supports uh, GDB remote debug. Um, I know that you can use uh, Eclipse. You could use the command line. There's a a, a command line GUI, uh, or rather a console mode GUI. Anyways, I'm going to use CLion because I like it. Uh, all you have to do is create a new um, configuration under the GDB remote debug section. Um, if you don't see that section, you just hit this and you know it'll be in the list there. Only, uh, they just added this feature in the .2, the 2016.2 release, so make sure you have that, otherwise you won't see this option. And this is how um, you configure it. A couple important things to make note of. You do have to point it at the ARM version of GDB. You can't use the default, because the default is for x86, and that's not going to work. So just remember to... Um, you know, click here and add a new debugger and add the uh, the ARM debugger that comes with the ARM toolchain. And then, uh, in order for it to successfully load symbols, you need to point it at the um, the ELF binary uh, like that. And then you, uh, for the target remote, you just use localhost 3333, which is the Telnet connection, or sorry, the Telnet server that uh, open OCD starts. And once you've done that, um, all you have to do is select that debug configuration and use this to run the debugger. It should say debugger connected. You'll note that as soon as the debugger connected, it started blinking. So the LED is blinking now. And it's just going to run in the debugger until it hits a breakpoint. And right now there aren't any breakpoints set. But if we set a breakpoint inside the infinite loop here that's doing the blink, You'll see that we stop, and it happened to be in an off cycle. But if I hit run, it'll iterate until it hits the breakpoint again, and now we're in a lit cycle. And uh, it seems like you know I have full I have full debugging support. I think there's a limitation as to how many breakpoints you can have and a few other things, but um, like there aren't any. Uh, automatic variables showing and it says variables are not available I I haven't yet figured out if um, local variables are available and also there's there's meant to be a way to uh, program the chip automatically via um, via GDB and I, I don't know how that works uh, I had to experiment with that a bit more um, I, I could just set up a, a custom thing within C Lion to run the the command, the open OCD command to flash the chip. But I would much prefer um, doing it in the I guess the the standard way, if that even is the standard way. So let's um, get rid of this breakpoint and let Blinky blink away. And hey, success, right? So hopefully that um, that'll help you out. Oh, one last thing. Um, I made I made these changes in my Open OCD file based on something that I found in a um, in a forum post. 
I think this is necessary <laughs> to enable that flash, which I haven't figured out how to use yet. I don't know what this does. Um, I'll, I'll report back once I do some more research, but contextually, it seems like it might have something to do with being able to access um, the memory stack of GDB when you're debugging. Uh, but I haven't, I haven't proven that that's working yet, so who knows if it's actually going to work. Alrighty.